Hi, today we're going to talk about objective 10.5. Describe the structure and function of the small intestine and large intestine. Starting with the small intestine, the main functions of the small intestine are to digest and absorb. And the small intestine is split into three different kind of subdivisions. So starting with right up here is the stomach, where the stomach meets the small intestine. That first section is the duodenum. It's the shortest section, just about 25 centimeters. And also this is where most of the digestion is going to occur. And then the middle section is the jejunum. And then finally the ileum will connect into the large intestine. Here's a picture we've seen before, but I want to point out a few things. So this is the first section of the small intestine, so that would be the duodenum. And then we have the pancreas and the liver. Both are able to make their secretions right here. If I'll take my mouse away, then it will show you the name of that down there in the bottom left-hand corner, major duodenal papilla. The major duodenal papilla is where all of the pancreatic enzymes and bile is able to enter the small intestine. So that's what actually digests the food and then allows it to be absorbed in the rest of the small intestine. The small intestine has several structural modifications that allow it to be able to function better. For example, the small intestine has what's called circular folds those are the, these things right here. And then if you look how they would like continue spiraling through the whole small intestine there, the circular folds are deep permanent folds of the mucosa and submucosa. So kind of like the rugi in the stomach, except the rugi were not permanent. These are permanent. The folds force the chyme to spiral as it moves through the small intestine. And because it's spiraling, it moves slower, which gives the small intestine time to be able to absorb the nutrients. And then if we zoom in right here onto one of the circular folds, these kind of finger-like things are villi. They are finger-like projections of the muc mucosa, and they contain the blood vessels. So here we have arteries and veins and lymphatic capillaries that are going to be able to absorb whatever is digested in the small intestine. And then finally, if we zoom in to a villi, we see microvilli. These are basically cytoplasm, like the cytoplasm inside the cell extends to the outside. And do you see how this kind of looks like fuzzy right there? That's why we call it brush border. It looks kind of like a, like a fuzzy comb or something like that. And there's enzymes that are found right here that can finish digesting the food. So specific structural modifications that allow the small intestine to be good at digesting and good at absorbing. Here's my own sketch of kind of the same thing to try to show you that. And the main benefit of the circular folds, the villi, and the microvilli is that it creates a much larger surface area for absorption. In fact, the average surface area of a small intestine is 200 square meters, which is the size of a tennis court. It's really impressive. And then what happens inside the small intestine? Uh, pretty much everything. Propulsion continues, and we have peristalsis in the small intestine, just like we did in the esophagus. That's where the areas of the small intestine contract. It will actually push the food forward. We also have some mechanical breakdown that occurs through segmentation. That's when, like, random areas contract that help break the food into smaller pieces. We have digestion because of the major duodenal papilla, all of those pancreatic enzymes and the bile. And then we also have absorption through the circular folds, the villi, and the microvilli. The large intestine's main function is to absorb water and to eliminate feces. And the large intestine is called the large intestine because it has a larger diameter than the small intestine, but its length is shorter. It also has three subdivisions. So starting right here, this is where the ileum, or the end of the small intestine, would attach. And then going up is the ascending colon, going across is the transverse colon, and then coming back down is the descending colon. And then the end of the large intestine is called the rectum and the anus.
And notice that we do have sphincters, which prevent poop from just coming out whenever. The major digestive features are to absorb most of the water from indigestible food residues, and it can also temporar temporarily store the residues. And then when it's time, it eliminates the residues as feces, what's known as defecation. I also want to mention the appendix found right here by the ascending colon. It has um, a little bit of malt tissue inside of it. So if you read this, it gives an argument for why the appendix is actually not vestigial, because it has that lymphatic function section. The large intestine is also important because it contains what we call bacterial flora, or basically thousands of different types of bacteria that live in our large intestine. They help us be able to absorb some types of vitamins, and they help us be able to break down foods that we couldn't otherwise. The bacteria are able to do fermentation to starches like beans that we can't digest. And if you remember, a byproduct of fermentation is gas. So all of us pass gas every single day, like close to 500 mils. So if you're ever on a date and this happens to you, let's explain to them how it's a normal process. And then you can bring up this question. How did the bacteria get into my large intestine? Two entrances. One up the anus, very close to where it's located, or the other option, imagine bacteria that could come in through your mouth and survive the stomach acid, survive all that pancreatic enzymes, and make it all the way to the large intestine. Pretty hardy bacteria. Most of them simply colonize through the anus. Um, we mentioned this before, but if the food moves too fast through the large intestine, you can have constipation, or excuse me, if it moves too slow, you can have constipation because if it moves too slowly, it absorbs too much water. And if it moves too fast, that's where we get diarrhea because it has not absorbed enough water. If you're curious about your poop, you can check this out. Brown is normal, red or black we should be concerned about because that could be a sign of bleeding. And I uh, thought you might enjoy this. Canine regulations must pick up defecation by owners. <laughs> and finally, the digestive processes of the large intestine. We still have propulsion. We have a tiny bit of digestion of some of those vitamins. We have absorption of water and then defecation. And the large intestine is the only organ that can defecate. I want to point you to table 23.2 in the book. It has an overview of basically this entire unit of all of the organs, the different digestive processes, and just describes them really well. You might find that helpful. This is a great video about poop. And then a couple other videos if you're really into digestion for you. And please reach out to me. Let me know what questions you have. Thank you.